Did you know something as simple as chewing gum could either be protecting or harming your teeth? This is actually a really common question that I get. A lot of people will be chewing gum and then they'll look at me and say like, I know it's bad, I shouldn't be chewing this, but I actually don't think it's bad. Actually, I think chewing gum could be really good for your teeth. For some people, but for other people, it might be bad. So a lot of times people chew gum whenever they're bored or to make their breath smell better or when they're trying to stay awake for a long drive, whatever the reason is. The act of chewing gum actually isn't all that new. It actually dates back to ancient times. For example, the ancient Greeks used to chew on a substance called mastic. This is actually where the term mastication or chewing came from. Now when I talk about gum in this video, obviously we should know that chewing gum with sugar is always going to be bad because sugar can lead to cavities. So I'm strictly going to be talking about sugar-free gum. So what are the benefits of sugar-free gum? Well, the first major benefit is saliva production. Whenever you chew anything, you're going to start stimulating the saliva in your mouth. And with chewing gum, it's for two different reasons. One is the act of chewing, which stimulates saliva, but also it's your taste receptors. When your mouth starts tasting the minty or whatever flavor of gum that you're chewing, that will also stimulate your salivary glands to produce more saliva. Now, why is saliva important? Well, your saliva is like a natural bodyguard for your teeth and your gums. It has a lot of antibacterial properties and it can fight off a lot of the acids in your mouth. So if you were to try to come up with the best time to chew gum, it would be right after a meal. So let's say you have like a pizza or something like that. Those carbohydrates are going to be sticking around in your mouth and those carbohydrates are what can lead to cavities. Because any carbohydrate that sticks around in your mouth, whether it's sugar or a refined grain or whatever it is, if it's staying in your mouth, it's going to feed a bacteria called Streptococcus mutans. Now this bacteria will feast on these carbohydrates and in turn it will produce lactic acid. This lactic acid is actually what damages our teeth. It will sit on our teeth and it will start to demineralize or weaken our teeth and eventually a hole will form. This hole is called a cavity. So if you chew gum right after your meal, you're going to be more likely to wash away these food particles because that saliva is coming in. And you're also going to be washing away and neutralizing whatever lactic acid or other acids are in your mouth. Because keep in mind, we have a lot of other acids in our diet too. A lot of different drinks are acidic. Pretty much anything other than water is going to be acidic. And a lot of different sauces or dressings can be acidic too. So there's a lot of hidden things out there that could be damaging our teeth. The other benefit of chewing gum and getting the saliva is you're going to reduce your dry mouth. And this is especially good for people that do have a dry mouth. If you never worry about a dry mouth or you feel like you have too much saliva, this isn't really for you. But for some people who take certain medications, or people who just have a dry mouth in general, chewing gum is going to help with that as well. And that's also going to help improve your breath because when you have a dry mouth, you're more likely to have smelly breath and again, prevent cavities. And your saliva carries a lot of minerals. So it's going to help remineralize your teeth and help strengthen them. And don't take my word for it. We have actual studies showing that chewing sugar-free gum can help actually prevent cavities. So this is a systematic review of randomized control trials and they found just that, that sugar-free gum can be added to your regimen along with brushing and flossing to help prevent cavities. Now you want to look for a specific ingredient in your chewing gum. The best ingredient is going to be xylitol. Now xylitol is really cool because it's actually an antibacterial and an antifungal. So this streptococcus mutans bacteria that lives in your mouth that causes cavities, that xylitol can actually inhibit the growth of that strep mutant. So the xylitol will actually prevent you from getting new cavities. Whereas the other sugar alcohols out there, they don't really do that quite as well. And actually some of them could still technically cause cavities, but to a very, very small degree, something that you wouldn't really have to worry about. Now the other benefit of chewing gum, especially more so at an early age, is that it can actually stimulate jaw growth. The act of chewing can help stimulate your jaw muscles, which will in turn help your jaw grow forward and wide. And this is how we want our jaws to grow. Now there are other things that are involved as well, like how you're breathing, what other foods you're eating, your oral posture at both when you're resting and also when you're sleeping. Your oral posture is basically how your mouth rests. So ideally your mouth should be closed, your lips should be closed, your teeth should be slightly touching, and your tongue should be against the roof of your mouth. 
not just the tip of your tongue, but also the middle and back part of your tongue. But also chewing more, specifically harder foods at an early age will also encourage that jaw to grow forward and wide. Why do we want the jaw to grow like this? Because it's more likely that the teeth will come in in the right position, because when your jaw is growing wider, then there's more room for your teeth to come in. And when there's more room, then your teeth will naturally come in in the right place, including your wisdom teeth. It also helps protect the airway. As your jaw grows forward, your airway develops, so it's easier for you to breathe. That means you're less likely to have conditions like sleep apnea, where you're basically choking when you're sleeping. And in turn, this will also help your mental functioning, so people will be less likely to have ADHD or other conditions that will basically hinder their mental performance. So for kids to start chewing gum, I'd recommend starting at the age of five. And you wanna make sure you encourage your kid to chew evenly on both sides. So not just favoring one side, but chewing on both sides, and also chewing again with that proper posture. So chewing with their mouth closed. Now I made other videos kind of going into more detail on your jaw development and proper oral posture. So I'm putting a link in the description below if you wanna check that out. Now what are the risks of chewing gum? Well. The main risk that people could have when they chew gum is either if they chew too much or if they have some TMJ problems, or in other words, temporomandibular joint problems. So your TMJ is the joint that helps open and close your jaw. So you have one on each side of your jaw. Sometimes people will have TMJ problems where their jaw will kind of pop or click or their jaw will deviate to one side or another. Or sometimes people can grind or clench their teeth, sometimes in their sleep or sometimes during the daytime. And this can make a lot of jaw pain, sometimes ear pain, it can cause headaches and it can be uncomfortable. It can even make your teeth hurt because it makes your teeth more likely to crack. It puts a lot of stress on your teeth, so it's not gonna be good. So I would say if you know your jaw is actively hurting or you have these actual TMJ symptoms of pain, then I would limit your chewing gum. If your jaw pops occasionally but you never really have any pain, then chewing gum should be perfectly fine. But if you start to have some symptoms, you wanna limit it until you can tolerate chewing gum. Actually, if you're having jaw pain in general, you wanna limit any chewing in general. You wanna stick with just softer foods and limit any movement with your jaw until it heals so that you can tolerate chewing foods again. But otherwise, if you have no problems, I really have no problem with you chewing gum even every single day. I would suggest though that you go to your dentist every six months or whatever recall you're on with your dentist, and that way you can check to see if there's any problems developing. For example, if you're grinding or clenching your teeth and then you're actively chewing a lot, you don't wanna risk cracking your tooth. Now, I don't think chewing gum is gonna be the reason that you crack your tooth, but you might have something else starting where your dentist might not want you to be chewing gum. Or you might have had some dental work done where your dentist this again, doesn't want you to be chewing anything sticky. For example, if you have like a temporary crown on that's on with this temporary cement and your dentist doesn't want you to chew anything sticky on that side, make sure you listen to them. So there could be other reasons why you don't want to chew gum more temporarily, but in general, I think it's fine. And it actually could be really good for your teeth. The other thing I want to mention is it is not a substitute for brushing and flossing. So no matter what, you have to brush and floss. You can't just say, oh, I chewed some gum today, so I don't really need to brush my teeth. But it can help along with brushing and flossing. So that's all I have for you guys. So I want you to let me know in the comment section what your favorite gum is and when your favorite time to chew it is. Like, do you like chewing it when you're driving to work or at a specific time? And do you like to chew it after meals? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. And I will see you in the next video. Studies show that nearly half of all adults have gum disease, but they don't even know it. Now, if you really want to get technical, you could make an argument that most people actually have gum disease, at least to a small, mild degree. Now, gum disease really starts with inflammation, inflammation in your gums. But there are some subtle signs that 